the uh, development of uh, thoracic aortic surgery program across the country has uh, uh, facilitated the um, concentration of uh, aortic surgeons and uh, physicians to form a multidisciplinary approach to treating thoracic aortic disease. Uh, this is in combination of uh, using endovascular uh, stents, radiologists, interventional cardiologists, as well as uh, cardiac surgeons to um, form a team and uh, um, examine the images as well as uh, uh, offering different options to the patient. Uh, the centers with the thoracic aortic surgery program have been uh, reported to have better uh, survival and better success in treating this patient. As I mentioned, the TVAR, which stands for Thoracic Endovascular Aneurysm Repair, opened uh, a, uh, a different approach to a uh, higher risk patient that potentially they uh, are not a good candidate for open surgery. One of these uh, um, patients that I would like to present um, is a patient that underwent a two-stage hybrid repair for thoracic uh, uh, aortic aneurysm in dissection syndrome. Uh, he was a 77-year-old uh, uh, Caucasian gentleman uh, presented with a 5.7 centimeter aortic root and uh, um, an ascending aneurysm, as well as a 5.2 centimeter descending aneurysm. He had severe uh, aortic insufficiency, had a history of chronic atrial fibrillation, uh, was uh, placed on anticoagulation with Coumadin, had some issues with GI bleeding, uh, comorbid uh, factors uh, were hypertension, diabetes. He had uh, a stroke, uh, hypertrophy of his left ventricle, which is thickened of the left ventricular muscle, uh, so some mild coronary artery disease secondary to a history of a smoking, and other uh, medical conditions, including prostate cancer and spinal stenosis. And as you can uh, see here, he also had an ingu inguinal her hernia repair. Um, on the, for the first stage, he underwent resection of a 5.7 centimeter ascending aneurysm with hemi-arch anastomosis. He had a total circulatory arrest under 15 minutes of uh, time at a modified aortic root remodeling. Uh, we used a number 32 millimeter hemishield dacron graft, and he had an aortic valve replacement with a very large bioprosthesis uh, and he had an intraoperative transesophageal echocardiogram. This patient uh, breathing tube was taken out uh, on the uh, next day, roughly around midnight. He was transferred to his uh, uh, private monitored room. On the second day after surgery, uh, he was uh, relatively a higher risk patient and he was discharged home nine days after his surgery. Then uh, on the second stage, uh, hybrid repair, he was uh, recognized uh, he's a good candidate for a uh, T-bar. Uh, this was uh, a few months uh, interval between his first and second surgery. Um, the landing zone into his aortic arch was rather short. The, uh, the proximal portion of that uh, endovascular graft needed to cover left carotid artery as well as left subclavian artery. And since uh, the, it is not safe for this stent to cover the uh, carotid artery, then uh, this patient had a bypass from the right carotid artery to the left with an extension to the left subclavian artery using a uh, Gore-Tex material. And, of course, the uh, 
the proximal portion of the left carotid artery was ligated. And uh, this is the uh, CT scan of this patient prior to deployment. Here you can see, here is the ascending aorta that is completely replaced with a DACRA. And as you can see, very well covered with patient's own tissue. It is very difficult on this image to say if there is a difference between the Dacron or patient's own aorta. And this was the hemi-arch anastomosis. And then you can see shortly after arch, he has that 5.2 centimeter aneurysm. And then this is descending aorta, and this is the right abdominal aorta. These are just uh, different views. This is more or less the same uh, view. Again, this is looking from the top portion. This is the left subclavian artery. This is the left carotid artery. The other one, the bypass between the right carotid artery and left. And then to left subclavian artery. Here, you can see that bypass from the carotid to carotid and left subclavian. And this is, uh, you can see the stent was deployed. This is about a month later. Um, the stent is covered the left carotid, left subclavian, and down to here. And as you can see, his aneurysm is clotted off, and blood only flows through the stent. These are the um, conventional axial images of the CT scan. You can see the, the middle uh, chicken wire sort of an image here of this stent. And then here, this portion of the aneurysm, as you can see, is clotted off. So essentially, the aneurysm is excluded, and the blood go only goes through the stent. 